The Way Home or Face the Fire The Survival Plan for All Human Plus Beings Chapter 8 The Shining Example The Light of the World The American Indians had it right until the greedy white men went and ruined everything for them. The white men went to America to have a fresh start and to leave all the things they disliked behind them, instead of which they took it all with them and inflicted it on the Indians. The white men lied and cheated the Indians, who were honorable and friendly people. That was when they weren't murdering the Indians. The Indians welcomed the early settlers and helped them to survive, teaching them what they could and couldn't eat, and about snakes and hunting, and survival in general. The settlers repaid them and their kindness with lies, deceit, and death. The Indians lived with nature, in harmony, in an idyllic existence, until the white man arrived and began to systematically murder them, almost to extinction, because of greed. Once the black slaves were given their freedom, they complained of being second-class citizens, whilst the poor Indians, whose country it had been for thousands of years, were not even considered to be citizens, or even human-plus beings. The Indians tried to teach the white man to live in harmony with nature, to ensure their own survival. The arrogant white settlers ignored the Indians' advice, calling them ignorant savages and continued to destroy and pollute the country until pollution became so bad that they had to consider it a real threat. It became so bad that in the last generation a new subject emerged in universities called ecology, which is about protecting nature and the environment. In other words, it took the arrogant, intelligent, quote-unquote, white men hundreds of years to find out that the, quote, ignorant savages slash Indians were right and much more intelligent than themselves. In more recent times, the, quote, civilized, question mark, world has, quote, re-educated, question mark, the Indians and other developed nations into believing that they need, question mark, their consumer products. The consumer society, first of all, creates a, quote, need, question mark, and then supplies that need, just like a drug pusher creates a need for drugs so that he has a lifelong customer for his merchandise. Addiction to material things is very similar. Advertising creates the need, question mark, and then comes the supply. The materialistic society taught the Indians and other non-materialistic natives of other developed, question mark, countries to feel that they need material goods so that they have another market for their products. The second benefit to the big businessmen and corporations, then, once they have these people hooked on their products, is that they can use this want to steal from them, use and abuse and manipulate the natives away from living with God in nature, and interlearning Satan's evil ways, that is, serving mammon, materialism. Mahatma Gandhi understood all of this and managed to defeat the British without aggression, peacefully, by refusing to be materialistic and teaching his people to go back to their old ways and not to buy British goods, which caused terrible unemployment in Britain and forced the British to give in to some of Gandhi's wishes. Gandhi won by playing the British at their own game and hitting them where it hurts, materialistic people, that is, in their pockets. Today, in various parts of the world, the natives are cutting down vast areas of the rainforests, destroying the forests and their natural environment and wildlife for money to buy materialistic goods that they don't really need. The rainforests are the world's greatest supply of life-giving oxygen, without which the whole of mankind in nature will die. Oxygen for life in exchange for money and death to buy things that they do not need. The rainforests, in producing oxygen, also get rid of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere so that it not only doesn't poison everyone, but also doesn't cause a, quote, greenhouse effect, which will overheat the planet and change all the world's weather patterns, to Esdras 5.5, melt the ice caps and destroy everything. Second Esdras 5.5, King of Kings Bible. The blood, life, shall drop out of the wood, deforestation, and the stone, Messiah, Christ, Mahdi, shall give his voice, and the peoples shall be troubled, and the air goings, wind patterns, shall be changed, El Nino, trade winds, etc., they are selling what does not belong to them, to buy death for everyone. God owns the rainforests and the whole planet. These peoples have lived quite happily without all these goods for thousands of years, so why should they need them now? Where is the world going to take all of its money to buy oxygen when there is none left? 
First you send in missionaries to teach them Satan's religions and about all the wonderful inventions and teach them possessiveness and convince them that they own the land and then that they need to become materialistic and then they are hooked. The stage is set for Satan to lead them on his merry dance into the fire with you. The only thing that you need is God and to survive and go home. And anything else is a want, not a need. Before you buy anything, ask yourself if it will help your spiritual growth and help you to go home. If it won't help you to be able to go home, you don't need it. Don't let Satan con you. You did not come here to destroy and pollute nature and exterminate the animals. You came here to learn to be good. Man is trying to destroy nature, and the day that he succeeds, you are all dead, and you all think you are sane. This planet belongs to God and the animals, not to you. The animals have more right to be here than you do. It is their home, not yours, and they have the right to survive. Animals are not polluting and trying to destroy nature and themselves, or you. Neither do they poison themselves with smoking, drinking alcohol, and taking drugs. You are the only one stupid enough to do that, and you have the audacity to call them dumb animals, and to think that you are better than them, and that you have more right to be here than they do. What arrogance and stupidity. You are evil, they aren't, and they are better than you. And when you have been destroyed, they will still be alive. Genesis 8.21 and Ezekiel 39.17-20 Genesis 8.21 And the I am smelled a sweet savor, and the I am said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every thing living, as I have done. Ezekiel 39.17 and you, son of man, thus saith the Lord I am, speak unto every feathered fowl, and to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves, and come, gather yourselves on every side of my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice, upon the mountain of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty, drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, and all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full, and drink blood till ye be drunken, of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, saith the Lord I am. Animals only kill to eat, and in self-defense, as God intended. They do not kill for, quote, pleasure, like you evil creatures do. Learn from the animals and nature, like the Indians did, and become environmentalists. Stop being so arrogant, blind, and stupid. In spiritual, and therefore real, matters of life, the Indians were hundreds of years in front of the white man. Unfortunately, the white man was ahead of the Indians in technology. The bow and arrow was no match for the gun. The Indians were friendly and honorable and God-fearing people, the great white spirit, which he really is, showing that the Indians were ahead of the white man in spiritual matters. Respecting and worshiping Wakantaka, the great white spirit, also known as Manitou. The Indians appreciated spiritual and not worldly values, owning only the necessities of life and moving freely about on God's land. They moved south in the winter and north in the summer, searching out the best climactic conditions to live in. The Indians did not have the audacity to say they owned the land, because they knew that it belonged to God, not them, and that God graciously allowed them to live on it and provided them with food, water, and means to create shelter. When the white men asked the Indians to sell them some of, quote, their land, the Indians laughed at them, but, being friendly and not wanting to upset or offend their new friends, they humored the, quote, simple-minded white men, agreed to accept their money and play their silly game because it seemed to make them feel better and happier. How can people own the land? It belongs to God. How have people managed to pay God for their title deeds? Why do people always want to own things? The more you own, the more problems you have. The more you have, the more there is to protect from thieves or clean or go wrong and to have to have repaired or replaced. It is self-perpetuating and a vicious circle, eventually turning the materialistic person into a slave to his own possessions and their maintenance and perpetual increase. You can break the circle and get off the treadmill if you want to. You do not own your possessions. They own you.